Building good forms is hard. You have to think about validating data, making accessible forms, and making sure your forms are easy to fill out with help text, error messages, and overall just a nice UI. FormKit is the best way that I've seen to make good forms in Vue 3 that makes implementing these things either automatic or really easy. It has built-in components for common things like text, checkboxes, selects, file uploads that are all easily controlled with props. It has good default styles that you can fully control with either a global configuration or on a case-by-case -case basis with props. And best of all, there's a few ways to do validation and all of them are really nice to work with. Let's take a look at three of them and the last one's my personal favorite. But first, I want to tell you about a free Vue event happening August 2nd and 3rd, Vue.js Forge. I've talked about their events before. You build a project guided by some of the best devs in the Vue space. It's run by Vue School and thousands of devs have already attended. And in this fourth event, you'll be building a Kickstarter clone, which should be a good chance to apply some of your Vue skills. I'm not getting paid to say this, I really just think it's a good event and best of all free, so click the link in the description to register. So to use FormKit, first we have to install it and add it as a view plugin, but then we get access to this form kit component globally. We can use it to create a form by passing a type prop, but we can use the same component to create our inputs just by changing the type. We can also use props to add things like labels and help text, and thanks to the default theme, it looks solid out of the box. By default, our form also comes with a submit button that we can either disable or just go ahead and change the text. Like everything we saw, validation comes from the props. We can pass a simple validation prop and use some of FormKit's built-in validation rules. It comes with rules for things like emails, number ranges, string validation, a bunch of other stuff, or if you're feeling really fancy, you can create your own validators. But let's say we want all of our fields to be required, our age field to block out anyone who is in a Zoomer, and require at least two of these three checkboxes to be checked. And now we got validation. Our form won't submit, FormKit gives us some nice error messages, and we just made our form a little bit better. Of course, the important part is that we can customize all of this. We can change the timing of when validation occurs, which by default is when an input is blurred, but we can change that to one of these options to adjust the user experience. We can customize our error messages by passing an object where each rule in our validation can have its own error message. So while that's the base usage, there's going to be some people that don't like having a complicated template where all of the validation rules are tied directly as props. FormKit also has a schema usage where you can declare your form as an array, with each element being a separate object. And for the most part, it's those component props that are now turned into properties. This can be an interesting way to reuse elements between forms. For example, if we have this name field where we want to have the same label, helper text, and all that stuff, we can export it somewhere else and then use it in multiple schemas across our app. But probably my favorite way to build forms is with the Zod plugin. If you don't know, Zod is a way to declare a validator, but also get a static TypeScript type that you can use when developing your app. This helps when working with user input because we can create validators that throw errors if the data isn't what we expect. But once we validate that data, we can be certain of its type. So we get all of that autocomplete and type safety that makes TypeScript fun to work with. And the FormKit team has built a first party plugin for integrating Zod. So if we install Zod and the plugin, we can go ahead and create our Zod schema. Then we can use the create Zod plugin method with our schema and get both our Zod plugin and a submit handler for our form. All we have to do is bind these onto our form object and now Zod will be used for all of our validation. The validation messages can be set in the Zod schema and now when we submit our form, we can be certain that this form data here has already passed our Zod validator. I think this is powerful because ideally your backend should be validating the data anyways and being able to use the same validator in both places makes it really easy to work with. In fact, this Zod schema can be extracted and reused in both places. If you're using Nuxt, this will get crazy to work with if this PR that I've been stalking gets merged. Essentially, it allows our server routes to type the body it expects from requests. So if we use something like usefetch, we get full type check-in depending on the API route. And if we're using Zod, we can have that runtime validation as well as the static types in both places. So try out FormKit. It straight up makes forms so much easier to work with. Subscribe for more content and help the channel get to 50k so I feel like a better person. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.